Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. The rest of us. The rest of us. The rest of us. Hi, and welcome to Old Guy Tech TV. My name is Rob Charney. I'm here today with... James. James. Hello. And... John. And John. John Charney, James Stevens, and Rob Charney. We're here for our little roundtable discussion today of odd and unusual things that are happening uh, that we're finding out from the internet, which we know is all things for all people and has all information that we want. So we... <laughs> we we have different stories that we're going to share with you it's today. Very so. reliable sources, right? So Absolutely, you believe everything you you've ever wanted to know is true on the internet. So you're saying it's the accumulation of all human knowledge. The, <laughs> you're a genius. That's perfect. That's uh, perfect. That's one way to say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it. it and, you know, and there, there's never anything wrong on the internet. You read it, it's true. Well, because Al Gore invented it. <laughs> Just ask him; he'll tell you, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I've got I've got a few things. But let's and start pants. with one of you guys. Which uh, which one of you want to start? You can go ahead. I don't have you, any stories. You can talk about your uh, you in the jungle mo thing that was in the headlines the other day, yesterday. The release of all the animals that you felt so enthusiastic about. Well, yeah. Well, it was the, it was the one about that that Nimrod, um, you know, let all those animals go and killed right. himself. You know, right. had a bunch right. of wild tigers bears it's and, a, actually a, a, it has it's not a funny tigers. story I, I you know you're, you're a real downer off the bat we start here with one of our funny it's supposed to be funny tales and you start with the downer of killing those poor exotic animals including a number of tigers that are endangered well it depends on really your, and your one monkey snack yeah it's a half-eaten monkey by now who yeah. ate it the, 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 one of the lions are tigers. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, somebody didn't grab it and put it in a barbecue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, this is Ohio. I, this Exotic is not, eating yeah, animals. Okay. Well, they, you never know. They would eat pretty much anything. They probably eat roadkill out there. I wonder who is getting a tiger rug. Roadkill anywhere, actually. Who's getting the rug? The governor. Nobody gets the rug, unfortunately. Oh. Well, well, I just. <coughs> excuse me. I thought it was bad because. You know, a lot of these animals had to get put down. I just, you know, I, I thought that was a bummer. I mean, I, I, I didn't... I think it's a travesty. I mean, those poor... I understand how dangerous these animals were. First of all, uh, Ohio, I can't believe Ohio allows... Uh, Exotic animal licenses? People that are probably not qualified. I mean, I have no idea if this, what the qualifications of this gentleman was. Obviously, he was not in his right mind. He's got a huge collection of, you know, of very dangerous animals larger co collection than some zoos yeah that's some actual sure zoos and you know and he flips out and uh, lets the animals go and kills himself and it's like it, it, it it's a shame well, what I, I, what I was reading today from Associated Press was saying that they uh, they interviewed a fellow enthusiast that knew the guy right and it was an animal collector exotic animal collector and he was saying that the guy was so in debt that he was just way over his head in debt and that, and that could have been one of the issues to to motivate him to release them? I don't know what his issue was, why he killed himself after he did it. Is it that he didn't want to deal with the repercussions of letting the animals go, or what? Then why didn't he, why didn't he let himself get eaten? That would feed them for a little while, I don't know. I think he might have been releasing them, hoping that they would be captured and taken into uh, some type of animal sanctuary or something, but there are plenty of places that would have accepted the animals gladly, like yeah, some of the... Absolutely. Like okay, well, he could have gotten a hold of... There in yeah, zoos and yeah, yeah, but... He released so many of them that it was overwhelming for the zoos, and they didn't. They they were complaining that they didn't have the means to take care of them all. But I mean, you get a hold of Marine World, or you know, I hate them, but PETA. I'm sure they would have taken them in. Well, you know, PETA's actually killed most of the animals they brought in. Then they yeah. then they've actually saved. But they could have taken some of them. Is what I'm saying. They're, they could have gone around and given. A certain amount to one group and another group and another group and another group and so yeah. on and so forth until you gotten rid of them all. He could have done something a lot wiser than letting them go. Instead of just deciding that I'm going to let these exotic animals that don't really have a place to go out into the wild in an environment that they're not even accustomed to. I mean, Ohio gets snow. I mean, there's a certain amount of animals that don't handle snow very well. Yeah. I just I couldn't imagine being one of the neighbors who they've, they've had like tigers run loose. I mean, you'd imagine going in your backyard and seeing a 320-pound th cat. 
I mean, the small ones... And, and are, that would be a small one. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the, well, the small house cats are terrors by themselves. You imagine one that size? No. You no. imagine what the needing would be like? And, you'd be bleeding. And I, I <laughs> understand I understand law enforcement's reaction right off the bat was to shoot to kill. I mean, they were just... There was not enough handlers or people with, with the knowledge and how to... Well, they can't uh, even chance it, really. You know, I mean, they, yeah. They, a 9 millimeter is isn't really going to take down a large cat very easily. It's going to slow it down. What well, depends yeah. on the gun. But well, I mean, my, it, my understanding, they, all, they use they large, large caliber rifles yeah, to I'm take sure they down did. all these animals. And it's just, it's is, a shame. It is a shame. It, yeah, it really is. So that was a that was a bummer. Great start. <laughs> it's all his fault. Well, you're the one that said that you didn't know what story you wanted when we were talking about this earlier. So it's might as well bring it up. That's well, okay. you know, I figured, you know, that way we can end high. I'll, I'll start another one. You see these wonderful, beautiful people behind me here? These are mug Where? shots, all right? I was looking for them. <laughs> see, why does there. one look like the one Dorothy's house I landed on? I think it's on? the same person. Is that the same person? <laughs> no, actually, it it's up? not. That's <laughs> it. It's a before and after photo. Yeah, that's yeah. What I was thinking. Before Taiwan, after. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, un- unfortunately, it's, uh, uh, it's not. But uh, with that said, I'll read you the story. <laughs> A plea deal in case of naked 71-year-old chick busted for backseat Buick sex. Wait, 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 wait. That, that, that. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. Chick is the chick. name? She's, yeah, I was thinking she's, chick. She's a 71-year-old chick. That's headlines. I didn't I make it up. I think after but, about 45, you lose chick and anymore? become a cougar. Well, 50, <laughs> depending on how you look. I've seen 50-year-olds look really good, but I, I'll agree. Right. Yeah, well, anyway, but the, the story's... No, what? no, I kind of get why he looks pissed, and it why could, she looks so happy because she finally got some. Yeah, she's yeah. happy, and and <laughs> and he's fifty year, fifty four years old, and just realized what he did with a seventy one year old, and that's why he's kind of no. Like, how old oh, is he? Fifty four. He's fifty four. Yeah. No, no, what he's realizing is what his alimony payment's going to be now. Yeah. Well, let's see. I don't know. The seventy one year old Michigan woman arrested last month after police found her naked and having sex with a younger male companion <laughs> in the back seat of her Buick. She was fined five hundred and eighty-five dollars and sentenced to uh, uh, a term after her plea of no contest today to a misdemeanor charge. Rita Daniels is her name. So wait a minute, did they prosecute the guy? Well, let's see. We'll go on. Because I would claim that she, was rape. She, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no sorry, kidding. I would say that's rape. <laughs> sorry, officer. She got me drunk. <laughs> she slipped me a Mickey. I, I don't know. Uh, or is it a mini in her guy's case? I don't know. Her plea was of disorderly intoxication. Oh, she was drunk when this happened. Yeah. I kind of think that would be the other way around. The prosecutors dismissed the indecent <laughs> indecent exposure charge for because nobody wanted to see that. It was like, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that one. I wonder but, if the cell block, you know, where they were at, were started having a rousing so thing of how dry the, I am. Would. Was there any volunteers to be the witness for that one? <laughs> you want to admit to seeing that? I'm sorry, y'all, Judge. I cannot admit that I ever saw that. <laughs> can you get? I wonder if you can get workman's comp. Here's a police report. Uh, Daniels and Adams, who was also nude, that means they were both nude, were discovered trysting inside the vehicle. Wait, what was that? Trysting? Trysting. That's their, their words, not mine. Somebody bought just, a thesaurus. Hey, I'm uh, just finding it amusing that they're using that which, word. Which was parked in front of a pair of restaurants. The car was rocking gently, and its windows had steamed over, said Officer Andrew what? Moshe. Why is he making it sound like it was actually some nice thing? After, it's like he's writing a uh, one of those novels. I know. <laughs> after opening the Buick's passenger door to break up the Saturday evening's uh, clinch, Moshe asked the naked pair what they were doing. Adams provided a succinct reply, I'm fucking this chick. Wow. So it really it was So he called her a chick, so that's where it came from. I still think she looks like she just came in from a broom. So she's needing she, well, I, all, all what I can is tell in her you, hair? You is that really, feathers? You really want to know what that is? I, I don't want to know. I don't the know what's in her hair. Stuff. It's, yeah, never mind. Like, like I said, I, I think that's her attempt to looking younger it's Ugh. blonde gray and maroon i don't know other it's, white substances right, anyway, no, but well, anyway so that i see you know it's a lot <laughs> funnier story than yours <laughs> that just depends you it's know kinda, Look at those i mean there's Man, a 19 year age or 17 year age difference between those two yeah yeah well 
I just think it's funny. She's smiling. He's like, I'm getting a divorce. <laughs> but this he's is married, that he was married, married. So you know, I'm assuming he's married. He, he's probably thinking to what a 30 year old that woman needs, than him. He needs to uh, probably stop drinking. Is what he's probably thinking. I mean, it's a little too much <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, what I was mean, in that? You know, you know the term about coyote ugly. <laughs> you, know, you, you wake up and said ugly, you gnaw your arm off instead of waking her up. <laughs> yeah. yeah the more is. you drink, the cuter she gets. Woo. Anyway, yeah, here was wow, that one. That was a. So do and we that have was a, one? that was happier. Yeah, yeah, let's let's move on. That's kind of a creepy. Uh, okay. Segment. Well, let's. Your James, what do you got? Well, I was just going to talk about what, how do you feel about people being sent to the morgue to a coroner's office to, to, fi- For to finish up community, community, yeah, community service. service. You're talking about Is that old, really a community service? I mean, they're already dead. Liz, Lizzie Lo- Lindsay Lindsay. Lohan. Oh, yeah. I can't even say it. Yeah. Lindsay Lohan, that lovely... Uh, Talented actress. I wasn't even going to use that A word in there. <laughs> what was she in? That's, uh, that's a good question. Oh, she was in the remake of The Parent Trap. She was in one of the, the, the latest but isn't Kirby she, movies. Isn't she, wait, what? Kirby? Like the last Kirby movie they made, she was in that. There was a Kirby movie? You mean like the... The, the Volkswagen. Uh, Kirby, you mean Herbie. Herbie. Herbie, that's right. Herbie the Love Bug, that's right. I was thinking Kirby, Kirby the little Herbie the pink, love bug. fat, oh, little yeah. Yeah, marshmallow. Yeah, Herbie. And that's what I was thinking. They made a Herbie movie? Or a Kirby, Kirby. movie? Okay, <laughs> now, so Herbie... <laughs> Herbie, okay. So it's like, was she the um, one that played Kirby? <laughs> I didn't. Re- I never saw the movie. Anyway, so I, had no I think idea. she was more of a singer or whatever. But I don't listen to any of that. She's poppy. Singer? Yeah, I was thinking. Poppy. Of, I think she's only uh, an actress. Yeah, I didn't think she was, she was a in a, She was in another movie she's called like "You're the One Who Killed Me" or something like that. I think that was Wait, the last. Wait, you mean I know what you did last summer? Thing? No, or? no, no. It was one like uh, something like like she died. I know or, who killed me or something yeah. like that. No, are you thinking of Jennifer's body? Because I don't think that was the No, movie. no, and that's, that's Megan Fox. Yeah. No, she I was in... I still don't think I Megan think Fox is all that hot. We're going to get a tablet so we can look these things yeah, up while I, we're Yeah, mine's here. still not hooking up You're the internet, yeah, so I can't pull up Lindsay it? Lohan's... Uh, Holy cow. Um, what and you don't have for. your phone on you, do you? Her rap the, sheet? The thing is, is I find that interesting. I mean, because she's failed community service many times. She hasn't just showed up. Right. And so they There was an ad for... Verizon. I love the way the phone says that. <laughs> so Verizon they, Wireless. So they decide to set her up with dead people? Is that what it is? Is that they've already taken everything valuable off of them? Then well, she it, can't take anything? Well, well it's, a, it's a scared straight type of thing. That's, I think that's, that's a good what point. it's got to be. I'm not sure that they're actually going to... Uh, have her work with the bodies. I don't think well, that's part of it. I think. What were they going to have her do? Like mop floors exactly. or something? Well, exactly. Was, that's that's what they do. There was something I, I read earlier where they were talking about that she was cleaning some sort of sheets and she already saw, you know, a corpse. And so I guess she cleaning kinda, the sheets. It's not like that. She got it. Was saw this the hotel from Four Rooms? No. <laughs> the morning after. No, it was like celebrity rehab. <laughs> and it was no, she was cleaning sheets and saw blood or something like that, according to something I read. And I guess that she f- freaked out. So they decided to make her work. So with Lindsay Lohan cleaning toilets, emptying emptying trash at the morgue. Oh, is that what she's doing? That's she's a she's janitor. Doing. Yeah, so she she gets to. See, I think that she should clean up all the bodily fluids that come out of the dead bodies. If you really want to scare somebody straight, and you're putting them in a morgue or a coroner's office. Well, she's she's she gets to clean the thing. She's she gets to have them see where she's going to end up. She yeah. gets to clean the thing. She spends most of the time near. So, I mean, I think they should probably consider that same thing with the who was the klepto one? Is that Winona? Uh, yeah, she got busted for being a klepto. Klepto. Yeah, she stole like some excessive like, amount of clothes. Well, I thought it was oh, Lindsay Lohan was the one. Lindsy Lohan has stole the, the she stole the, the necklace. necklace. The necklace, yeah. Right. But Winona also. But, but Winona has been known for doing that. I think they just need to start dealing harsher with celebrities. I mean, it's I think it's kind of crap that they're actually taking them on and actually um, making them forcing them to pay taxes over the years that they've let them slide on it. Um, thank you very much, uh, Wesley Blade. Snipes. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Well, he was one of those morons that believed, oh, we don't have to pay taxes. Well, I'm wondering if that was the same thing with Chris Tucker, because he's upside down in his house. Well, think, we were talking about this last week, I think and not Chris on Tucker the was show, just... but we just were talking about that as a headline, is that he had a $6 million house. Did you get? Did you catch this one? No. 
Chris Tucker uh, bought a house in Florida that was a six million dollar house, ten thousand uh, ten thousand square feet house with like this basement that was modeled after a pirate ship. All this, Crazy. all this excessive stuff on the beach. The house was valued at six million dollar, six point four million dollars, something like that, in two thousand seven when he bought it. He got into debt over over four million, but the. The mortgage payment was what twenty five thousand yeah. dollars a month is he, what I said. He owes a total of eleven million dollars. Over eleven million dollars to the IRS for this house. Wow. I think that it should be illegal that you have to pay more than the house is actually valued at by five million. <laughs> how is that even legal or even? Well, it's it's, well, in, how it's did interest. He get stay, though. How did he get to stay in the house without being? Well, for one, because exactly. allegedly, you know, allegedly he has money. I, mean, I think that's what it comes down to. Well, I mean, his show got canceled. So he's, he was he had a show on Comedy Central that is being canceled now for they said that there was no comment on why it was canceled, but he had a show coming out that is canceled now. I mean, when's the last time you well, saw Chris Tucker some, in something? He I had mean, some mental problems. There was something else that he did. I, okay, I believe that. I don't know. I always thought he was actually a funny man. Well, like, oh, I know, but I, come on. I the last thing we all saw that was funny was that you was the guy from the Fifth up? Element. Well, he did that, but that wasn't the only thing that he did that was funny, because he had a show after that. What show was that? It was like a little um, this Broadway show or whatever. He was cruising around doing the stand-up shows okay. after that, after Fifth Element. And those were pretty funny, actually. He had some pretty good or ones Or Friday. There. Friday doesn't really... Hey, uh, the first one. Yeah. Not the Friday after next and the Friday after that, or whatever that was. Those Fridays don't count. Yeah, those were just dumb. Anyway, but that's... I think the way that they're trying to use the celebrities as an example of what can happen now, it's ridiculous. Well, that's like, yeah, right. I mean, Paris- I mean, they let them slide for so many years, and then they also decide, oh, we're going to make an example out of them. That's just hypocritical. I mean, what? Paris Hilton got, like, a day and a half or a half a day in jail? Something like that. I mean, and I don't think that was, like, a half a day in jail, though. It was, it was like, an hour. half a day in the holding cell or something. That yeah. wasn't in jail. So I'm sorry. I, they, they do treat it lightly. I read an article talking about there is was there's an upper and lower court now. They're talking about the rich people, and the higher up in power get one court, and you know we the people get stuck on the lower court where we actually get dealt the punishments. I know. Well, I mean, think about the Judge Judy shows now. Yeah. I mean, the Judge Judy, Judge Brown, Joe Brown, or whatever. Yeah. And, I, yeah. I wish I miss Wapner. You see some of those guys, and they are actually pretty light, and generally they're uh, small claims court. Is what you're looking right, at, on right? Those exactly. Things, which is yeah. fine. They're I mean, small, they're small parts, but yeah. you still need it. I mean, they have. It's just smoke and mirrors, is what you're looking at in those shows. It's not really what court is like. Yeah. Well, these people all get paid for appearing. Yeah. So exactly. I mean, you know, and they decide to waive the actual legal part of it. I mean, so instead of going to actual claims court, they go on to Judge Judy or Judge whomever. And uh, they get paid for for being on the show, yeah. and then if they if they win the decision, whatever it means, they get that money too. Yeah. It, so it's, why not? If you can settle it. I understand you can that. Settle it easy fine, that way. But, why not? That's a you know. But like John's saying is that I mean it's like we're <clears throat> we're separating the law. Oh, there's law for you going into this court. Oh, We're gonna throw the book at absolutely. you. Absolutely, I'll tell you what. If we get a chance next week, not only or what you're talking about, true. There was a, an email that came around talking about how we need to take con- take Congress, both Senate and, and the congressmen, and have them be in the same situation as the rest of us. They get Social Security, not their own special. Thing. Yeah. They have to have the medical same medical system that we go. They have to have. I mean, in other words, everything that's good for us has to be good for them as well, because you know, and and. Let's not get into the next because I don't have the details. But next week, let's. I'm going to pull out some details of it because it's disturbing how it's them against us, and that's how they think about what they're. Well, most you of know. the people in the Senate get. Um, they don't even pay into Social Security. Oh no, no, they, they have their they own get program. The benefits. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They get the benefits, but they don't Congress. pay into it. Yeah, yeah. Congress and, and the yeah. Senate. Yeah. Senate. I meant the whole. Yeah. Yeah, the whole. The whole thing. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. Anyway. Yeah, well, we're like gonna, you said, that's uh, that's that, a that's whole story, big can of worms right there. <laughs> no, no. We'll get some politician in here. Not, not, I'm sure nobody knew that level, but we'll get some in here. We'll talk to them about how they feel about that. Uh, some of our our own representatives. See, I, I, I have an idea. About, you know, I, I like what you just said there. They are our representatives, right? And 
I believe that they need to be fired if they do not represent us. And that goes into our voting. Right. But anyway, that's a, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, I, I did read I something. Yeah, I remember. remember. A show, we can do a whole show just about people not voting, just about you know, you know everything. We, yeah. we can cover that. Yeah. That's anyway, an easy one. I yeah. was going to say, I did read somewhere was it where, where Congress is only required to beat one day a year. Technically, um, it's I, like I don't know about all all of that. That'd be something I'd have to look into. But but I, but I had an idea of how. Well, if you're talking about meeting in Washington, yeah, like, oh, okay, like Washington D.C. Yes, yeah, they only are required to actually meet once a year see, in I, Washington. But see, they are yeah. they are supposed to have meetings outside of that as well. I had an idea what they should do for uh, for court. You know, instead of having like these Judge Judy and Judge guys, you know, have like. Uh, you know, Big John from you. You know, Ultimate Fighter, and just let him go at it, bare knuckle. You know, the winner gets the spoils. <laughs> I mean, come on. Have you seen uh, the show? I mean, see what gladiator well, I, fights. <laughs> you know what? It's just if they're, if they're fighting over, she stole my purse. Let him go at it. Yeah. Well, have the you ever watched the purse? Have you ever watched <laughs> totally. um, Parliament in Britain? Yeah. Oh gosh. It's an interesting system they have there because those uh, who can yell the loudest get to speak. <laughs> it's yeah, it's not like our system at all where we have to be polite and you can't shout out anything. There have been and, fights, and, 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 and it's unbelievable what happens in Parliament. There was a there was a there was a British <laughs> politician who was dragged in front of the U.S. I forgot what exactly what it was for, but he just lambasted you know the guys, and his comment to England was you know the, the United States Parliament's you know one giant uh, Congress is a giant organized bore. Okay, yeah, that may be. I mean, but uh, anyway, yeah, Parliament We're, Parliament is actually a fun thing to watch if you really want, funny, if you want to watch something exciting over ours. Yeah, come on, our politicians are so old they'd probably bust a hip doing excuse it. Excuse me, Congressman. Excuse me, Congressman. That doesn't happen in, con well, in Parliament. Yeah. <laughs> it sure seems like the senators anyway. Sure it's like them. you have to bring your own baseball bat to get in the word. But it, but it does happen during uh, what are those uh, those political things that have been on TV lately. Those discussions. About, oh yeah, yeah, the um, uh, debates. Yeah. Did you do you see the debate the other day? Oh, you talking about the G, uh, GOP debates? Yeah, yeah they on? kept interrupting the, each other. This the one guy would have a point, the other guy would counterpoint, and the guy who originally said the point would be would start talking over him, and the other guys would, would you let me freaking talk? Yeah. You know, we were you know a couple of the radio show I listened to were ready. That's like I want blows. Come on, let's fight. It might come down to that pretty soon. Here, might be this. interesting. I don't know. Better than what's going on now, I suppose. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. All right. I got more disgusting stuff. Oh yay! Yeah. Let's Always. Go. Is it like yogurt from last week? Yeah. <laughs> the like case of the unwanted flavor. So I don't have a larger picture of this young lady. As big I as think we you got guys here. can see it out there. Can you see it? Okay. Well, anyway, this this maybe woman uh, was arrested for entering a grocery <coughs> store walk-in freezer and urinating on $508 worth of baked goods. Sounds cold. Wait, what? Yep. And why? She Did walked into the fridge to pee on baked food. Did she give a reason for peeing in the freezer? As detailed in the cause affidavit, State police tro uh, troopers were summoned to the grocery store at about 5 a.m. The clerk explained that Harkness, that must be her 5 name. 5 a.m.? Pictured, uh, pictured. Uh, at one point, the workers asked her, well, what's going well, on that here? Picture, that picture was actually taken in her house. I mean, It does. Okay. Enter here, had entered the walk-in freezer, and that she could get... Could not get her to leave. Okay, here we go. I'm not <laughs> reading today. Sorry, let's try this again. Here we go. I think it's a poorly worded uh, article. Uh, it is. I'm trying to make sense out of it. Um, so she had entered the walk-in freezer, uh, and the, the employees in the store could not get her to, uh, to leave. Uh, so the, so they called the cops, and the cops were there at 5, five o'clock in the morning. Uh, when the county employee opened the freezer door, uh, Harkness' friend asked her if she had gone pee in the freezer. Harkness replied, yes, I did. <laughs> Upon investigation, wouldn't you like to be the trooper that had to investigate this one? I just feel sorry. Upon investigation. Just like for the steam. <laughs> oh, the stock boy has to <laughs> clean it up. Trooper Robert Baldwin discovered what appeared to be frozen liquid in the freezer floor and splatters of frozen liquid on several boxes containing food. Ew. Hopefully he didn't go. <laughs> 
What is that? <laughs> they go on to say... That's a limeade flavor. The criminal complaint, the damages for the baked goods included packaged cookies, $248 worth of cookies, $36 wow. worth of bagels, <laughs> wow. and $224 worth of two-bite cakes, whatever those are, little tiny cakes, yeah, I guess. Just a little yeah, well, at least it wasn't lox. So. But, but it doesn't say why she did it? Was it, like, out of spite for somebody that worked there? Was it out of spite for the business? No, was she it, ended up just being charged with was disorderly she conduct. drunk enough that she had to go to the bathroom? But, That's my guess. I'm guessing, but didn't you know, she walk in and all of a sudden it's again, cold in here? Would a normal person do that? Uh, well. No. Define normal. You never know in this state, though. Look, if in I this was, country. If I was locked in the freezer, and I was in there for a very long time, locked in. Yeah. Okay, nature's going to take its course. But this woman was just locked in, decided to walk into a freezer in a place she doesn't even work, and urinate. My guess is, you think drugs were involved with this? A it's got to be something a little like alcohol, this. Some, maybe? Some, something was... Does a normal person do this? Define, define normal. Yeah, define normal. Normal is what is, oh, what, is what you are used to. But we're, not, we're, not, but, but we're not looking at that point right now. What we're looking <laughs> at is... Guess up. I mean, when Why? the last time you went to the bathroom in the freezer in a grocery store? Never. So that. <laughs> so that means. So that means. At least that is a while. The, no, At that, least he knows me. That, that means that's the norm. So I've just defined normal for you. But he's not normal. Ask his mom. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. But, well, but but that's but the norm. Norm I is agree. not to go into a store's freezer and pee. Yes, I agree with that. But. What I'm saying is, th I was curious is if there was other motivation besides being in an altered state of her mind, <laughs> like spite, like spite, Honestly. or anger, or well, it doesn't say retribution it's, it's, no. or vengeance or when, something you know like what, that. The, the when story, was this? The story. This was in. I think it was dated February. So oh, it's, la it's last been year. This year. Oh, I was going to say because if it was recently, then maybe she was following the Occupy Wall Street people. <laughs> Because there's a lot of pics of some dude urinating on a car and all sorts of... Oh, yeah, sorts and they've of... taken over this park, and it... Yeah. That's, again, but, that's a story for another day. But, yes, going in there and peeing on hundreds of dollars worth of food and things like that, and that's probably actually become to a felony for her off of the amount of baked goods that she actually the peed true. on. true. Because there's a certain amount of money that you can get away with, and it stays a misdemeanor, and then once you yeah. reach a certain amount... It becomes. I think she was under that, but still, that you know, there's a couple of laws that you could uh, throw at her. Throw at her for that one. I mean, but you know, she's a, you know, uh, what's what's the term? Adulterating food. Yeah. Contaminating. Yeah. It could be contaminating food. It can be uh, that plus um, exposing yourself in public. But her just desserts. Mm -hmm. She should have gotten all the stuff she urinated on. She, she, <laughs> that could have been her uh, jail food. Her, yep, her just desserts. <laughs> I would have given like it to her. Would you be the one that <laughs> handles it and serves it to her? As long as I got gloves. <laughs> no, no. No gloves. No hands. I'll make you do it. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, Alright, you want another? I'm going to save this well, one for got, last. Okay. What do you got? Um, what was the other one I was looking at? Hold on, I do. I can look at some of the previous stories. I was like, Actually, the one that I was kind of curious about to see what you guys actually thought and I kind of brought it up to you guys earlier is the the guy that was executed <clears throat> for killing his six month old son oh, this one because he hated his wife was executed in, in Alabama on Thursday and his last words his only last words were game over oh yeah some, yeah I brought that up to yeah, you guys and, game over hmm was he a this kind of goes back. I don't know. Or you watched Aliens <laughs> too much. Yeah. I just kind of find it interesting that this man seemed to not have any remorse. So that wouldn't be your. Oh, well. For killing his six month old child. Yeah, it was his son. Now. In spite. Yeah, it was in spite over his wife. It, it makes no sense. And it just kind of goes to show how little this man even either either valued life totally. for one, 
or there, there was some mental issues that came up with that one. It's got to be one of those two. I just don't know. It's just freaky that this man, even right before he died, all he had to say was just game over. Well, on the positive side, at least he didn't do with Jeffrey Dahmer. But yeah, it just doesn't make any sense why you would kill your your child just to make just in spite because if you didn't whatever your ex or wife. Did. No, I can see the point that maybe he wanted her to suffer mentally, and that's right, why he killed right. her, uh, killed the I'm child. Sure, I, I, I'm assuming that that's. But it. how are you that cold that that doesn't affect that, you? I, when I look at a case like that, I, I make the assumption that the individual is mentally ill. That that's got to be what it is. Okay. And I, I, I think that's the only way that you, you can interpret it. Because hey. un, un, back to the normal again, yeah. uh, he is not. He was obviously, obviously not. not. There, there so, cannot be anything he, right. normal. He can't be the average person, because the average person wouldn't do that. But I, I actually commend Alabama in the sense that they didn't lock him up in a mental institution. Right. Because some states, California for one, would oh. probably lock him up and say that he's mentally unstable... And keep him alive. Well, the, instead of executing him over the fact that this guy obviously has no uh, value on life. Do they flip the switch or just push a button? Did they tell you how? It didn't say. Well, uh, you know the, the 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 situation in California generally is is does the person know the difference between right and wrong? That's well, does this person can, even know right and wrong? I mean, obviously well, not. That, that's the determining <laughs> because he's not. He has no remorse. remorse. He's on his deathbed. He's showing no remorse. If you technically knew the difference between right and wrong, right. you would have some type of remorse. You right. think at the at the last moment instead of just saying ah it was a game it's well, over. Oh you know, yeah, that, that was, but, yeah. But, obviously. Yeah, but an average person would realize in killing anybody in general. Is 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 not normal. Is not a good thing to do. So I'm, I'm so, you know, calling him, no, you know, an average person. I'm not calling mean. him average. I was just saying that this is something that I just came across that I thought was very interesting yeah. in the sense that this man had no remorse, no regret, but was just willing to hurt somebody that was close to him by killing part of him. I mean, the baby was essentially part of him. Says that it was, you know, right. says it was his kid it with his wife, and it definitely had to be, you know, I'm assuming pre motivated because oh, I'm assuming obviously. he had to think about what were the repercussions about this, unless it was something well, that the dude was so unhinged that didn't realize that it may have been a crime of passion at the time. Who knows? Maybe the husband and wife got in an argument, and so in an argument, I mean, instead you of hitting know. your wife or going out and drinking, his thing was, I'm going to kill my kid. Yeah. I mean that I, obviously that's what that's what he figured at the time. It may have been a crime of passion. We don't know. Did what? Do you know what the actual charges were? Uh, he, just says that he was um, <clears throat> that he killed the six-month-old child be, because he uh, admitted that he hated her. It says that he admitted to killing the child, and he admitted uh, to hating his daughter, uh, his wife, his wife. Oh, okay. Says so, an Alabama man who testified he killed his infant son. At his family's home because he hated his wife. Did that, it, that's what it says. Does it, it does, so it doesn't talk about his feelings towards his well, child. Well, I can't read the full article. It just says that it, this is the this usually what it gives me is just like the first paragraph. Yeah. So and then it goes into details probably about how he was killed and. Well, that's pretty bad. Because then, then, then by assuming like that, I think he he never associated the kid with him because he would say, you know, I hate my wife. This is her kid. So I'm assuming he never realized, or never realized, or never cared, or never thought he, enough he that never it was took responsibility for his well, own child. Yeah. Type yeah, thing. yeah, 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 yeah. It's got to be. Then, that. I mean, because that's the only way. It, and there are males average. that can't bond with children. They just they don't understand. I don't it. think They're it's not, that they you know, can't do it. They just they don't, don't want, want to. to. Yeah. Um, I think I, maybe you have both in this case. I mean, I think, I think there are males. Well, this goes over in, nature versus nurture. How he was raised. Exactly. I mean, but, uh, he may have been raised so poorly that um, you know a, a child of his own would be raised the same way. I mean, but yeah, no but I, I personally don't believe that that's actually something. It comes down to your own decision. It comes down to your own decision that I want to be like my parents, who never, you know, uh, exactly became part of my mm -hmm. life. Right. Instead of being like, oh, it's just how I am. This is what I'm going to be, and this is accepting uh, your. Um, <clears throat> your uh, your your environment instead of being like, well, I don't want to be part of this, and that's what it 
looks like. Maybe he was raised poorly by his parents and decided that this is how I am. This is who I am going to be. Yeah, but, but at some point in time, you've got to realize, okay, my parents fucked up in raising me. I've got to do better. I'm going to do better. At some point, in, you know, it's one thing that bugs me. All these TV shows when I was a kid that said my parents did this and I'm this way. It's like, no, at some point, you've got to get up your ass and, you know, if you're that way, then change. You know, you've got to get ass, you know, and take... And, and take well, responsibility I mean, for your own life. If you want to go really back farther enough to d another court case, bring up the Menendez brothers. I mean, they didn't like their parents, so what they do is they stuck in the room and killed them. I mean, is, do you think the parents raised them that way? Do you think that the parents were like, well, if you don't like something, you just beat it to death? Really? Wasn't, um, wasn't drugs involved in that case? Wasn't the fact that they couldn't get enough money to get the drugs that they wanted from the parents? I so, believe that was part of yeah, it. Yeah, and I thought they were going after the life insurance policy, and I, I think I think that's what there money, was more money was motivation their motivator. than just that. Right, but right. I, I, I mean, <laughs> I am looking. At, I don't know the whole story behind how the parents had raised them or anything like that. But do you think the parents really raised them that way? That if if you want something bad enough, you go out of your way and by any means get it. Well, I think it is that what you think they raised them as? Well, I think it depends. Honestly. Well, I, I think it depends. I mean, I, I doubt they took it to murder, but I, I would not doubt in being, you know, the type of people. They're maybe the type eight. It's like, you know, if you want it, get it. You know, it's kind of the, the business, create your own, you know, manifest destiny. I have a feeling they didn't realize that that meant they were going to get a shotgun to the face. I thought they beat them. Didn't they beat them? They got shot, I thought. I don't remember. Well, you know, was how, a long yeah, time ago. However, they died. Right, I, I was pretty young. Yeah. I was pretty young during that case, so I don't remember all the details. Well, I mean, however, I di however they died. I just, you know, I, I I would not doubt that it got so far as their parents said, "Look, you know, in that life, you've got to uh, you've got to do it yourself to obtain your own goals." I just, you know, I have a feeling if there was any sort of mental that thing in there that they just said mental instability of yeah know, and drug induced whatever rage. But, yeah, and they, and they decided I'm going to do this because this is going to get me what I want. They're yeah, obvious, obviously there was a breakdown in... in and it's not justifiable and, and, no matter what you say. No, it's and, not. I'm not saying there is any so justification there. You have two brothers that decide to care, kill their parents. Uh, again, that is not normal. Uh, are, uh, were, were they found mentally incompetent at any point, or did no. they understand? Was I it? know they weren't found okay, mentally incompetent. So they, they understood the Wasn't that a mistrial? Between, Wasn't the first case a mistrial, and right, then it went well, on to I, another I trial? I don't know, and, and I guess if we were going to bring this I don't know, we'd have to back, go back over and look we better, over the we details. We better but. study the details to know, but you know, then again, it, obviously that's not the norm. Thank, thank goodness. And, you know, it's <laughs> obviously not the norm. But you know. I just find it interesting that we do have a lot more people like that on death row that show no signs of remorse for anything they've done and we're paying to keep them alive well i i want to know how much is there how much i find problems with that and i understand that we have a system for appeals to make sure that these people aren't executed for a crime that they actually did not commit i understand that but I think there needs to be a certain amount of appeals that is allotted before we actually step in and do it. Just like in this case of this man. I mean, he could have actually fought and done appeals and appeals and appeals. I don't know the, the death penalty and uh, the type of things that you have to deal with in Alabama. Where well, California doesn't execute people. They die of old age. Yeah, pretty much. And we keep them alive and healthy until they die of old age. Anyway, that's another can of worms as well. But I just thought but, it was yeah, really I, horrible the way that this man just decided his last words are going to be game over. I would be I would be really interested to know in how much of this was because I've always believed really bad people or really bad children come from bad parents. I, I'd love to know how like how he, how how they were raised, how he was raised, like you know, or how how much did he not learn from his parents. I think what you should do is take the time one of these days and look at the lineup of the serial killers in Europe, uh, the UK, and America, because a lot of what their study of these serial killers goes into is their parenting, and it does not even matter some of the parenting. Some of the parenting that they did the history on some of these guys, like H.H. Um, Holmes, and there was another gentleman that was the original Hannibal Lecter. I forget his name off the top of my head right now. But these people had some pretty bad parents, for one, that were abusive, things like that. But then if you look at some of the other serial killers that came out, like uh, the Green River Killer, 
um, uh, where was he? Was he uh, Oregon or Washington? Well, yeah, that was well, that, well that's my point. Is I'd, but I'd love they to know didn't how, have bad parents. But how does that happen? I guess is my so is my curiousness to that. This is what I'm saying. Is this is where that argument of nature versus nurture comes in a really big play? Is where did they get these ideas? Some of them are sick fantasies that either the parents didn't address or something like that. And I'm not saying it's all the parents' fault. I'm not saying that at all. It comes into your own. I, uh, what you accept and everybody has these dark tendencies it, 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 I, I yeah. say that about everybody everybody has these dark tendencies and fantasies that may have come up at some point and we either quelled them or, or found some way to deal with them yeah. other than acting on them well yeah but, I, 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 would, I, I just love to know where they do it because at some point you can't blame the parents because the, par- the parents didn't kill the person. The parents did this. They may have been bad parents, but at the end, it's the person's responsibility. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that's why I think it'd be interesting for you to look at which ones did which, and what type of parenting went on to it. Like Manson. Manson actually uh, ran into uh, being pr- taught as a protege by uh, the the Birdman from Alcatraz. Right. Really. He actually met him in a I transfer. Didn't know that. In a transfer out in what was it Kansas or Oklahoma, one of those states out there, the, but where the Birdman got moved from Alcatraz and right. and took Charles Manson under his wing. Manson even uh, is, talks about him hmm. that he knew him very well. Was this in his Helter Skelter book or no? This was actually uh, documented uh, as a transfer. It wasn't something that was really widely known as that he actually spent time with him in the same cell or something like that, same cell blocker. Something like that. Two but, loonies in the same cell. But Manson was underage at this time, but he was in a federal prison for something. or I forget exactly what he was locked up for that time. He was locked up quite a bit through his teenage years. But pretty much Manson's whole uh, parenting was through the ju- judicial system. Yeah. That was who he was raised by. You're right. So that goes into it. It, that, it, depends on, that, it also depends not only your parents, but who were really raised you. Was yeah. it society? Was it your friends? Was it your parents? You know, you're right. I mean, uh, parenting doesn't necessarily be by the people who, you know, who... who anyway. Well, and, and then you add in the environmental factor, drugs, alcohol, whatever it may be on that, and that's that's a whole other issue. I mean, we're, we're losing so many young people to some of the drugs that are out there now that are just horrific. Yeah. They're stronger uh, now than they've ever been. Oh, that's oh yeah. Uh, it's marijuana terrible. has gotten uh, up in THC and everything else by just in from about 2000 and yeah. up. It's doubled what it was from the 60s to the 90s. It's and, insane. And the nuts, stuff nuts. people try are, are nuts. Like we dip in formaldehyde. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It gives you like a hallucinogenic effect. I've never tried great. it, but this is what I've heard. Yeah, great, I just great. This is what we need. I don't know. Anyway, that's that's. I think that's also part of it. So, what's the, the next story? story? Well, my last story. <laughs> this one's a doozy. Let's let's see if we can get this this guy's picture. Up, a, up there, he is. He's a, a fine, upstanding can citizen. You, he, he looks like a very, very, very nice individual, doesn't he? Well, so uh, he's from New Jersey. Uh, so yeah. you can't speak English correctly. So Someone's New Jersey right. Nothing cops, good comes from New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey cops have cracked the, cracked the case of the thief who has been burglarizing vehicles and defecating in the back seat of the ransacked cars. That's pretty shitty. Ha ha ha. Cute. Thank you. Hadrith Caesar. Great Hadrith? name. Yeah, Hadrith. That's first name? Uh, yeah. 18, was nabbed Saturday after a witness called cops to report that he had spotted a suspicious person inside an auto parked in the neighbor's driveway. Armed with a description provided by the witness, cabaret cops arrested Caesar. Oh, that's his last name. Who who had uh, pedaled away from the burglarized car on a mountain bike. (laughs) The vehicle's owner examined the car and he discovered that his belongings had been strewn about the vehicle. Additionally, the man found a mm, fresh pile of feces in the back seat. Okay, I got a question. What did he wipe his bum with when he was done? Or did he just pull up his pants and continue on? Probably that one. That's gross. Well, I don't know. The, the, it says here the police are probing. Oh, oh, oh. Whether Caesar was responsible for two <laughs> prior <laughs> Cabaret auto burglaries, including the thief defecating 
in the ram sack. Nice words cool. there. Like that? Yeah, yeah, ni- nice pause. <laughs> I thought no, I'd do that one no. for effect. Did I do good? Yeah, yeah you did. I did was good. Is okay, it actually so that, written there? That's that actually written there. That's part of the Roby. actual story. So, what? yeah, he, he was... Yeah. Anyway. Well, the cute thing about this uh, he's a, very he's wise a, and smart child is that... And I'm going to call him a child. Is that you can't say you didn't leave DNA evidence behind. <laughs> <laughs> it's just if you want to process the DNA evidence. I am sure that there is somebody with a gas mask and a full uh, body suit that's uh, going to do it. Yes. So it's a steaming pile of yes. evidence. Poor guy. Jeez. Now, Poor now guy. He's, it's now not a smoking in, gun, it's a smoking, smoking pile. pile. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. So now, you know, he's held in jail right now on a $15,000 bail. That's it? Yeah. So what, $15,000? 15000 would, would the charge be wow. defecating in public and breaking and entering? I'm sure. Sh- who knows? And what type of car was it? Maybe he just didn't like foreigns. You know, so maybe it was Caesar a Honda. has been charged with theft and harassment. That was his charges. Harassment? Yeah. So, the later account refers to the alleged backseat detailing. They're saying Since New that's Jersey's harassment? criminal statutes do not specifically address automotive defecation. Okay, you don't have that's to destruction do automotive. Of property. Yeah, that's vandalism. <laughs> that's something other than pooping in a car. That's vandalism for one. I mean, that's... Well... I would throw the book at him. I'd find, like, biohazard things that can go into that... Uh, vandalism, like I've been saying, uh, just multitude of things. Throw I a would roll the f- toilet paper. Anyway. Yeah, I say throw a world in peace at him. Actually, I'd give him a cell with no toilet paper. <laughs> you like pooping in cars? You better find something to wipe your own butt with. So put him in the lower okay. cells. So we were talking about how people are raised. Who raised this guy? And why? It would have never occurred to me to even think about doing something like that. I have that. a feeling he might have been raised by, with, a, with you know, this is just a guess, but, you know, a mom that was either too busy or tried her best, and he was just a, stumb- a scumbag kid who listened to his friends too much. Well, it's obviously that he has no respect for other people's property. Oh, totally. No respect at all. So, for me, that would be that he was raised with no boundaries, obviously. Because if you're taught boundaries... You learn respect because you know that there are certain things that you aren't supposed to do. So if you're told, no, you can't do that, and you're at least given a reason why, you don't have to be given a reason why all the time, but I think that there should be a certain amount of reasoning that goes into it, that you learn boundaries and respect. But if you're taught that whatever, I don't really care, and then that gets you know given to you that, ah, Whatever, I don't care. Well, how about then decency? you're going to be probably treating people's property without res- any type of respect, and that's what it looks like. Is I mean, if you go into somebody's car and you're just like, "Oh, this guy's an idiot. I don't care," you know, and rip down your pants and dump one somewhere, that's showing that you have no respect for anybody else. So and hopefully, he'll- he's locked up with a bunch of gangbangers that are going to teach him some sort of respect. <laughs> I just. <laughs> He'll, he'll be probed, all right. Oh yeah, he's going to be probed. He's going to be. Uh... He's going to be the towel boy. Yeah, yeah, he'll be yeah. somebody's bitch. I'm sure he's going to be <laughs> shitting in the any. He just doesn't have Sully's any, bed. That's he just doesn't have any, just doesn't yeah. have any decency. I mean, I couldn't imagine being in public and everybody drop trowel and you know drop it like it's hot. It just, I couldn't do that. Yeah, I could. I'd have performance I anxiety I, yeah, for I one. Know. I don't know. It's how. like all those people from OWS. I mean, you, you would think that you know peeing in public. Especially a lot of these women would, would be a little embarrassed. There's this there's this video a, a video. You of might this. not want to throw out just OWS without explaining uh, what that o- is. Occupy to the Wall Street. Thank you. There's a video of this <laughs> this girl using the you know peeing in public, and there's this old guy walks behind her, just whack, kicks her right in the ass. Wait, this is in Occupy Wall Street. I, I, I thought it was. I wasn't. I'm assuming it was, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> like some old guy just walks up and kicks some woman peeing. Yeah, it was an old guy, and there was this like you know, like wow. twenty or thirty year old, and well, she was peeing in public. Like, one way to teach her a lesson: don't, don't just walk there and pee. I guess. I, yeah, you know, I, my was, thought was that's awesome. Go old guy. Wait, was it in front of somebody's <laughs> business? I all the only gift so I if that was the owner. Go <laughs> props. <laughs> you know, the, the only thing I saw was you know was this this lady was using the restroom, and you see this old guy look at her, have this face of disgust, you know, being disgusted, and just walk up and you know kicks her, and she goes. Quink. And it's, uh, this dude's probably in his seventies or eighties. <laughs> because at eighty years, at eighty years old, nobody's going to throw the book at him. They're going to go, "Oh, poor confused man." Oh, well, anyway, it's... there was obviously no confusion there. 
No confusion there. Not, not <laughs> once. Not, what, no, but if I was him, no I would I would fiend, you know, feign being, oh, I'm confused. I didn't know what I was talking about or doing. Yeah, or, a little bit worried about getting urine on my foot. <laughs> I'm sure nothing happened to that. That whole situation's a whole different thing altogether anyway. So Yeah. Well, what do you think, guys? You got anything else? Have we wrapped it up for today? I think we've yeah, covered it pretty I think, good. I think we covered the whole world. The, yeah, the weird world's troubles. Stuff and that, yes, bad parenting creates bad children. <laughs> yes, bad parenting. They're, they're, that's the way we'll end it. Bad parenting creates bad children. So. And remember to wipe when you defecate in somebody's car. Oh, it's just, <laughs> just don't defecate. Bring the handy wipes. Car. Exactly. <laughs> Bring wet, uh, wet ones, son. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech. Have James Stevens and Jonathan Charney with us, Have too. A good one. We'll see you next time.